syndicated source material. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Syndicated Source Material. Going into our 16th episode that aired on the Radlich and Broadcasting Network. Looks like this aired back in early January of 2015. Uh, we are covering What If Volume 2, number 24, What If Wolverine Had Become Lord of the Vampires. So the original length of this episode was 1 hour and 48 minutes, and after edit today, I got it down to 45 minutes. And I'll explain why here as we get towards the end of this. This pre-roll. This book has an on-sale cover date, according to Mike's Amazing World of Comics, of February 19th, 1991. Uh, written by Roy Thomas, art by Tom Morgan, lettered by Janice Chang, and colorist Tom Vincent. Okay. So yeah, going back through this, while I was editing, I made sure to share uh, the picture. There's a picture in this comic of uh, Punisher with a gun in his hand and the cloak of levitation surrounding him. Really cool picture. So I shared it again today. This is September, near the end of September 2020. On Facebook, Evan Bevins chimed in that he has a, a small hero clicks figure of that Punisher, which is, he posted a picture of it. It looked really cool. Uh, Ronnie mentions his friend Josh Calandros, who ends up becoming a friend of the show, a friend of mine. You'll hear Josh most likely in future episodes. He becomes a bit of a figure here for the Source Material podcast. I mentioned that it's a new year. It's 2015. And I was making a resolution. 2015 New Year's resolution was to sell comics. Okay? And you'll hear me mention that I had 12 boxes of comics. 12 long boxes of comics at that time. To this day... How many years? We're looking at a little bit more than five, going on six years later. I have not got rid of any of those boxes. As a matter of fact, the collection has increased to close to 18 long boxes. And I specifically said in this episode, I did not want to move because of how many boxes of comics that I had. And I did. I moved in 2017, so about two years after this episode aired. And that was not fun, moving all 18 boxes. So a good portion of this episode, like I mentioned, we're down to less, I chopped an hour out of this thing. Uh, and a good portion of it was near the end of our discussion on the book. Actually, it was after we'd finished the comic, uh, Jason Teasley had called in and we spent the rest of the episode just talking about random stuff. I think Teasley was getting ready to move. I had some extra spending money from Christmas and I kind of asked what type of, or what graphic novel I should get and other things that really were not essential to the podcast. So I made an, an executive decision to cut all that out. So all you have is the essential discussion uh, on the issue at hand so with that being said let's go ahead and get into it this is what if wolverine had become lord of the vampires i am your host jesse starcher and i want to welcome you guys to another episode of source material trudging through and doing some of these what if mini episodes if this is the first time you guys have had a chance to listen the purpose of this show is to do our best to summarize some Stories, some good stories and maybe some not so good stories out there in the comic book medium. That way when you leave this podcast or you're done listening to it, you will have a very good idea of what has occurred. Maybe you'll make a decision whether to pick it up or not. Maybe it's something that you want in your collection. But um, joining me tonight, uh, again, I think this is his third, third or fourth appearance on the show. Ronnie Adams from the Screaming Boy podcast. Ronnie, how is your new year going so far? It is going very well, sir. How is your new uh, new year going? Well, it's doing good. It's doing good. I will. I'm going to go ahead and preface this real quick. If I have to get up and leave this podcast for a few minutes, uh, it's it's very well could be because my son took a three hour nap today. He may not want to go to bed at nine thirty. <laughs> So, Ronnie, I know you may, you're may you used to taking over. Uh, you got your own podcast anyway on the Screaming Boy podcast. So if I, if I leave you, sir, to take over, by all means, I know you're capable, and I know you've got everything there in front of you. I we, do. Yes, you do. And going into the, tonight's, tonight's podcast, we're covering, like I said, we're covering the What If episode, or the What If issue, some of the What If issues out there, some of our favorites. Last podcast I had you on, we did uh, What If the Alien costume had possessed spider-man which by the way is doing fairly decent and it's doing pretty good numbers um so deal. I'm, yeah i'm proud of that but you know one of the things i asked you was was there another one that you were interested in doing uh and you said wolverine what if wolverine was the lord of the vampires 
Can you give me an idea of, of uh, you know, what led you to kind of say that one? Um, it was just a really dark uh, issue that caught my eye. I was going through all my what ifs here recently, and uh, this is definitely one of the favorite ones that I've, I've read. It's just a really different look on on Wolverine, uh, all these different characters in there, and, and it, it's just <laughs> not to say that all the what ifs are dark, but this one was really uh, a really different perspective on the on the whole thing. Dracula, Wolverine, uh, the Punisher, everybody. Yeah, it it definitely is. I think I I believe I own this issue, but I can tell you it's been years since I read it up until you know a few days back. And, uh, yeah, yeah you, you talk about dark. We're definitely going to get into that. And, and, and one of the many things I've said at the beginning of the what ifs was all gloves are off. I mean, heroes, yeah. <laughs> heroes are going to heroes may die. Relationships severed. We already saw in, in what if, uh, you know, the first issue of what if where Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four and Reed and Sue, their relationship ended as she went and uh, became a, a, a fellow Atlantean to uh, <laughs> Namor. The issue that we're covering for uh, those keeping score out there, it's volume two, uh, issue number 24. Came out in April of 1991. Roy Thomas is the writer, apparently also, well, co-writer, I'm guessing, because they list another guy by the name of J.M. Lofficer. Roy Thomas was one of the first writers of that first What If that I covered, so it's pretty cool to see him come back and do these. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty neat. Artist is a guy by the name of Tom Morgan. Can't say that I'm too uh, too familiar with any of his work, but I can tell you right now, it, in, it's in this issue, it's pretty strong. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, oh, the it's, art it's, is, is gorgeous in this issue. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the few things that you you catch. Again, this is he did he did a good job uh, just by looking mm -hmm. at the. You know, some of the art and the way it's portrayed. I'm not a, you know, I, I listen to podcasts about comics. I'm, I talk to a few people that, you know, write a few, but I certainly am not the most knowledgeable as to what goes into, you know, creating a comic book. We're getting into the early, you know, this is the early 90s here. D could you do me a favor and describe the cover of this comic book? The cover of it is, is pretty fantastic. It's, um, it has, uh, Wolverine <laughs> hunched over, uh, Jean Grey's body, uh, and, He's apparently feeding off of her. It is has the Punisher in the background. It's it's definitely one of the that's that's the one that really caught my eye. That's yeah. what that's one of the things that made me pick this up because it's a it's it's definitely I mean she's in her Phoenix outfit and everything so you don't really you don't really see anybody taking advantage you know, not not advantage but you know really um, overpowering Jean Grey while she's the Phoenix but but you've got Wolverine feeding off of her blood trickling down and then the Punisher poised to strike in the background uh, with his his Uzi pointed right at uh, seems to be the back. Wolverine. Right off the bat, you, you, you're you thinking, okay, Wolverine is definitely a vampire here. And what I was wondering is, we're, in, we're at 1991. I was trying to remember when the first Punisher-Wolverine battle actually happened in the Marvel Universe. I swear, I swear it was in, it's going to be in one of either two titles. It's either going to be in Punisher War Journal, because I can clearly remember, matter of fact, See the uh, I see the cover right now, Punisher War Journal number six. I don't know if you remember this cover, but Wolverine is like he's got his shirt off and he's got his claws popped, and uh, it, on the claws he's making like an X with the claws. Matter of fact, I'll send this to you. But on the claws is Punisher's shirt. I think that's it because yeah, it's got because I don't know what you're talking about, and I just happened to pull it up. It's uh, Wolverine with his claws and X with his claws yes. through Punisher's shirt. Yeah, First and time, I swear, maybe the last. June of 1989, mm -hmm. published June of 1989 by Marvel. Oh. So okay, okay. So yeah. but again, I can remember seeing these two guys. You know, I was a huge Punisher fan. I can remember seeing that cover, going, "Oh man, this is going to be freaking awesome." The <laughs> Punisher versus the Wolverine. I mean, it, I was so excited for it. So getting into this, we get probably one of the hottest battles. This is 1991. A couple years later, uh, we get a a kind of a new spin on one of our uh, one of my favorite battles, which is Punisher and Wolverine. All right, so. What if Wolverine was Lord of the Vampires? Now, first off, I didn't understand what story this came out of. This is a story that I'm not very familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, Watcher does a good job, as he always does at the beginning, which is funny because in this particular issue, he like gets like all upset about the fact that he has to introduce himself again. <laughs> He's kind of <laughs> bad about it. <laughs> and he's like, well, okay, well, just very well. If I got to tell you guys who I am, here we go. But like in every what if issue, you know, he, he, uh, 
uh, he gives us an idea of what happened in the Marvel 616. And apparently, the X-Men, which uh, Colossus, Storm, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and I think Kitty Pride all mm-hmm. did battle with Dracula. Now, if I would have had the time. Oh, never mind. They did it for us. The, the editors here gave us X-Men number 159. If you read the X-Men, you may have this in your collection. This is the story that they're, uh, they're, they're bouncing the what-if reality off of here. But anyway, they did battle with Dracula, the Dracula of the Marvel Universe, okay? Mm-hmm. Goes by Dracula, doesn't go by any other name, apparently. He is Dracula. Now, apparently, the Doctor Strange had Storm uh, in his thrall, uh, and was there was a battle for her soul, according to the according to the according to this comic. In our reality, Kitty Pride, I think, somehow knocked or got uh, Storm Aurora back to her senses, and she helped turn on Dracula, zapped him real good, and then the X Men helped try and defeat Dracula, and then Doctor Strange comes in. Uh, Doctor Strange comes in and reads something that's called the Montesi... Mon- Montesi? I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it's... The Mon- Mon- I'm going to call it Mon- Mount Montesi. We'll call it Montesi from here on out. At least I will. The Montesi Formula. <laughs> The Montesi formula uh, is a, 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 I guess, some kind of a spell that he reads from Dark, the the fabled Darkhold book, and this spell kills off Dracula and all that he has ever, I guess, fathered into vampirism. So it, in the Marvel universe, Dracula dies, and all his, all the people that he's turned, and it kills off all of the vampires. And so thus ends the th- thus ends the story there in the 616 where Dracula is no more. However, in this what if reality, by the way, Doctor Strange number 62 according to according to the what if here says that that's where you can read where Doctor Strange gets in there and eradicates vampirism. Now in this new reality, this new reality, Storm is not get does not come to her senses, and, and as a matter of fact, she's still during this battle she she is completely loyal to Dracula, and instead of zapping Dracula, she zaps the X Men basically, and kind of knock you know knocks them out a little bit enough for Dracula to go over and bite and turn our heroes. Uh, first person he's latching onto is Wolverine. Uh, then he hits Colossus. Then he hits Nightcrawler and turns them into vampires. Now, Wolverine is, for those of you who are pretty familiar with Wolverine, you know he's got a, he's got a, de- a, a, he's got a different mindset. You know, he's got the whole berserker mentality. He's a strong-willed person. That strong will actually benefits him to where he's not completely under the control of Dracula. And as a matter of fact, within two pages, Wolverine decided that he's going to fight Dracula and take over uh, and become the Lord of the Vampires. So we get a, a battle between Dracula and Wolverine. Now, here is a point in which I, I didn't know this, and I, I haven't watched Twilight, but I swear that I don't recall <laughs> vampires turning into wolves. <laughs> I was always Team Jacob, if you can call me anything, but I, I oh, certainly don't re- <laughs> But I, I certainly don't remember vampires being able to change the wolves. Can, now, you may be more familiar with the whole vampire thing, but is that something that they can just shapeshift into whatever they want, or, or how does that work? There, there are so many different powers that vampires are supposed to have had. I mean, different folklore, you know, you've got European, North American, all that, where they can um, shapeshift into animals and, and fog and stuff like that. But it's mostly, like, nocturnal animals. So, like, and Bram Stoker's, which is what I use as my go to this is what they can do and this is what yeah that's my definitive a wolf a bat dust fog things like that and then and he can impersonate other people too okay all right yeah so a wolf definitely and nosferatu i think he could turn into a a wolf gotcha all right very cool see i learn something new every time when i do this show and i hope our listeners do too Wolverine turns into a wolf, and of course Dracula, he turns into this like man bat thing, and we get this huge, we get this battle that lasts for a couple pages. And again, Ronnie, if there's anything you want to jump in, point out that I'm missing, whatever, hop right into it. Um, cool deal. I do want to point out that you can still see part of Wolverine is there because he calls him your bat ship, <laughs> and then later on he he even calls him Darwin is they're about ready to fight. So there is a little bit of Wolverine's attitude still in there. Absolutely. So yeah, they get into this fight. Wolverine uh, gets a hold of uh, Dracula's neck uh, while in wolf form. You know, proceeds to uh, Dracula turns back into his human form. 
Wolverine sort of does. He becomes like this man beast wolf looking thing and walks over pretty much. Dracula says, end it then. And Wolverine pops his claws and off goes Dracula's freaking head. I, we're in the 90s, folks. Things are getting a little grim and gritty still. <laughs> Off, off, off went Dracula's head. Matter of fact, it, you know, obviously they don't show the cutting, but you just <laughs> you see Dracula's head rolling <laughs> down the hill, um, his, his mouth agape and his eyes wide open. So, okay, so Wolvie gets the best of Dracula, promptly beheads him, and uh, they they make a point to to tell us here that that because Wolverine dr- drank from Dracula, he has become evil. Not not only just evil, he he's become like double evil because the evil that Dracula inherited from whoever he bit, they, I know they name him in here, but the evil that he inherited then basically transfers over to Wolverine on top of Dracula's evil. So Wolverine is now like this evil badass vampire. Now Wolverine immediately he he starts sending off the X-Men to turn other mutants and other superheroes into vampires. He's now become the Lord of the Vampires, and he's got himself a plan on on what to do with the world. Uh, he he also learns of Doctor Strange and the Montesi formula. I'm going to pronounce that like three different ways before this thing's over with. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds right to me. All right, I I'm getting I'm not adding letters. That's the good thing. I'm not adding letters, so that's, <laughs> that's that that matters. But anyway, so they he takes off and he's he's attacking the uh, attacking mutants, turning them into vampires. And they've be, be uh, they've fallen over New York City and they're terrorizing New York City. But he he learns about how Doctor Strange has this Montesi formula. They decide, okay, well we we can't let him get a hold of that. I don't know if Doctor Strange is just not aware that he has it in. He actually has it in his mansion in a book. What Wolverine decides to do is like, okay, we can't let him figure out that he's got this in his house. So the first thing first thing we need to do is eliminate Doctor Strange. And they do that by setting up a trap for Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange falls for this trap. Uh, he's out, like, floating around New York City. He there, he sees this red light, and it turns out it's the ruby. Now, uh, here's, here's going to be some pronunciation for you. The ruby of Sidorak, which if that is the jewel, I believe, that the juggernaut possesses that gives him his strength. Is that correct? It is. It absolutely okay. is. So he sees this shining like on some steps or something, heads down there to check it out, and before you know it, the juggernaut just runs right in, smack dab right into the back of uh, of of Stephen Strange. And immediately they tell you right here, it shatters Doctor Strange's spine. And then Juggernaut punches him in the face hard enough, I mean in the face, to where his neck, his head snaps back so fast that it breaks his neck. Um, mm-hmm. And that's pretty much the end of Doctor Strange right there. He's he's dead. Juggernaut picks him up, picks, picks up Strange's body and goes, takes it back to Wolverine's <laughs> lair. Wolverine's not taking any chances with Stephen Strange because he knows how powerful he is. So he's like, you know what? Take him and throw him into the crocodiles. So broken back or shattered spine, broken neck, and now just to make things, sure things are, are done for, we're going to throw him to the crocs. And <laughs> so we're going to say, I'm going to safely say that Doctor Strange is dead. <laughs> Now, there's a point in there where they mention that Doctor Strange's cape flew away. Mm-hmm. Jug- Juggernaut kind of mentions that, that Doctor Strange's cape flew away, just as an aside thing. But, of course, I kind of thought that that was going to come back into play here, so be prepared. Now, with Strange out of the way, the mutants are going to go on a full-force attack on New York. We have some of our favorite superheroes not only becoming vampires, but are also become uh, becoming dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, read off some of the. I don't know if you got it there in front of you, but if you look at, the, mm-hmm. give us some of the heroes that are in that uh, that little that little panel. The the vampire, uh, the ones he's turned. It looks like he's got Luke Cage, Spider Man, Nick Fury. Those and the Hulk and She Hulk are all been turned, and the villains are. Oh, oh, and Moon Knight has been turned, and the villains are Electro, looks like Kingpin, Doctor Octopus, Hobgoblin. I'm um, sorry, there's Dagger, uh, Paladin, Rhino, Craven the Hunter, um, gosh, I can't, yeah, um, Mole, for some reason, Mole Man, and, <laughs> I, I guess because of these underground creatures, but I mean, really, Mole Man? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Mysterio, <laughs> uh, Shocker, and I don't know who the blonde dude is, and then you got the dead ones, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Thing, 
A frog? Somebody's going to have to tell us. Yeah, somebody's going to have to tell us who that is. Because we'll have to either do internet research or something, because I probably would have <laughs> killed him, too. <laughs> like, then, yeah. Dr. Doom, Falcon, Namor, Vision, uh, well, all of the Fantastic Four, uh, yeah. not just things. Uh, Mockingbird, mm-hmm. Black Knight, uh, Black Panther, another, well, looks like maybe Quasar, um, mm-hmm. which I don't know how you would have got to him, because he's got the quantum bands, he's all co- you know, cosmic stuff. Not really my forte there. But no, I'm sorry. The one I thought was Paladin was actually Cyclops. Paladin is a dead one. That's about it on the dead one. So that's, um, it says that he did it. There's no rhyme or reason, but it looks like all the strong personalities and the ones that could possibly take him out are the dead ones. Yeah. Definitely. Because they make mention that, uh, you know, the conventional vampire, we're going to get into this, but conventional vampire weapons such as stakes are, mm-hmm. are definitely deadly. So Hawkeye would probably want to be one of your first targets. Because if you were yeah. suffering, I mean, if all it would take is just a, a clear shot with him and you're done for. Okay, out of all the vampires, okay, that he created, which one would you hate to face the most? Or actually, which what? one would you hate? <laughs> Yeah, that'd been my first choice too. <laughs> I, mean, I don't Jugger- give a crap about Juggernaut's the Juggernaut's bad enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Juggernaut's bad enough. You've got two Hulks that are vampires, and then um, God knows what's going through Spider-Man's head because he's turned dark several times in his what if comic And yeah. then, but that's you know the others I'm I'm okay with. I mean, Mole Man, what? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I agree. So we we talked about who killed off. Now they cut to the White House. And uh, this is probably one of the funniest pages in this whole book because it made me laugh. I don't know if it, if if you caught it. I'm sure you probably did. But you know they're they're talking to the president. Okay, we got this general up there talking to the president. Say there's this plague that's this uh, we're powerless to stop the spread of this terrible plague. And the president his his reaction to this is says, well now general I'm sure that if young people will just be more careful <laughs> about their dating habits and if we can promote the use of condos. <laughs> okay, now, now we know there is no oh, way, there is no way, there is no way that that was supposed to be condos. No freaking way. But, no. um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, obviously the general's talking about, you know, the spread of these, the vampire plague. We find out that New York City has been quarantined. The, you, the military's come in and quarantined, so no one gets in. People who are trying to get in and trying to help are, are being stopped. Uh, they mentioned Captain America, Iron Man. They're not allowed in New York City to try and help the, help out the people in there because they're afraid of the spread of this virus. Uh, well, the vampirism. No one's able to get out. So if you're if you're perfectly okay and you're trying to get out of New York City, you're stuck. They're not going to let you. They're they're going to shoot you on sight because just like you had mentioned, there are they can change their appearance. So there's no probably no way of telling. Um, so if it escaped, if it gets out outside of New York City, the, the rest of the world's in in peril. All right, we cut to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is still. Oh nope, he's not still alive. He's in his as he as he usually is. I, I'd, I'd like to know the percentage that Doctor Strange spends in his astral form versus his physical form in the books that uh, in the Doctor Strange books. I'm sure it's got to be at least. 80, yeah, the dude's floating 80, around 20. everywhere. Eighty twenty. <laughs> I mean, he could be looking at you right now, and uh, you'd never know it. But Doctor Strange, he's floating around. He's still confused about the way he died, and this guy shows up. Looks like. An ain't well, they call him the Ancient One, um, mm-hmm. which I don't know if that's his actual name or if he has a different name. But he's obviously he's uh, Stephen Strange is a student of this guy. He, the Ancient One says, "Hey, you know, look, get yourself together. You need to go and take care of this vampire problem by getting the Mont- Montesi formula." And of course, Stephen Strange's like, "Well, how the hell am I going to do that? I'm dead." Well, he says, "Well, then what you need to do is find a human that will go in there and take care of it, it get it for you, and, and uh, that'll be able, be be able to." read it and take care of the vampires. So, Doctor Strange is on a mission, and the first place he comes across, he comes across this alleyway, pretty much. There's these hooded figures. Now, you got vampires, which is bad enough, but then you got people who are dumb enough to want to be turned into vampires, and they've (laughs) allied themselves with the freaking vampires. The Dark Order, I think, is what they call themselves, and they they look like ninjas clothed in black, and they're, they're going around terrorizing the city, but there's one man standing up for the good of New York City, and he is uh well i had a whole thing written out for him too hold on just a second let me find this real quick he is here we go because i i I wanted to make sure these humans are terrorizing the city and their wish is to become vampires but one man is taking the war to them (laughs) 
the Punisher. Yeah. <laughs> so the Punisher is there. Immediately, Doctor Strange is like, that's the guy. That's the guy I need. Ronnie, I'm going to let you take it over from here. Finish this out, man. All right. So Doctor Strange sees uh, <clears throat> the Punisher laying waste to these, as they call them, human toadies. And um, he says, that's the guy. And he floats down. And he says, um, or he, he pops into the Punisher's head. And the Punisher says, somebody's in my head. Who is it? And where did this cape come from? And all of a sudden, <laughs> Punisher's standing there with his submachine gun with Doctor Strange's cape wrapped around him in the eye of Agamotto, Agamotto, right on his chest above the skull. So now Doctor Strange and the Punisher have become allies in their the, the fight against the vampires. So uh, Doctor Strange informs him that there's only one way to stop them all. He said uh, he actually looks, uh, not looks at him, he's in his head. He says, what if we can take them all down in one fell swoop? He said, that sounds good to the Punisher. He's asking him how he can be so cold and callous in this time. And uh, he, he, he says, it seems that you've lost your soul. He said, Mr. I lost my soul the day that my wife and kids were killed a lifetime ago. So mm-hmm. much <laughs> angst in the Punisher. And yeah. then uh, one last bullet into the back of a toady. He said, let's go. So you've got the Punisher and um, and Doctor Strange team, teaming up and they head back to Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorium. He leads him back in, but uh, lying in wait is a, uh, the Dark Order. So he makes quick work of them and then all of a sudden the big boys come out and play. We've got Juggernaut, Storm, it looks like maybe Sabretooth, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, and Colossus. Right there, Juggernaut and Colossus would scare the crap out of me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he the the fight ensues. So they're fighting the new improved Punisher because not only that, uh, they, he got his guns and everything else, he has the cloak of levitation from Doctor Strange. So he chucks a couple of uh, garlic grenades at Nightcrawler and Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> he just happens to have garlic garlic grenade. <laughs> I, I would have loved to have seen I would have loved to have seen Frank Castle back at his den. Like, I gotta come up something with something for these damn vampires. And he goes to the grocery store and gets some garlic and then he's gotta modify a damn grenade in order to put <laughs> <laughs> garlic into it. <laughs> so, what did he uh, use? Like ash garlic clothes, garlic garlic powder? Exactly. I, I mean uh, if there's anything I learned from Monster Squad, garlic sh- sure can <laughs> do the it can do the job, whether it in, in many forms. Star. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, the garlic leaves him reeling like it always does, and he takes them down with silver bullets, and which each have a cross carved into them. Nice. And all of a sudden, I didn't even notice that. after he takes down Nightcrawler and Cyclops, he sees Storm coming at him, and she's in her bat form. So he takes his silver line gloves and rips her wings off, uh, and then destroys her in a, a hail of gunfire. Comes down to it, there uh, you've got uh, Cyc- or Colossus, who is actually um, pretty ticked off. That he killed his, uh, that Punisher killed uh, his friend, his friend. But Punisher whips out his one of his another secret weapon, and it is a looks like a super soaker on steroids, and she just sprays him with water. (laughs) Yeah, he sprays him with water. Well, you would fight me with water. He says, "Not just any water, buddy. Holy water." I mean, you got all the tropes coming out, man. I love it. Makes short work of uh, of Colossus, and then comes one of the big boys, another one of the big boys, and then uh, Juggernaut comes behind him and takes a uh, takes a swing at him and misses. But he grabs Frank Castle. He grabs the Punisher by the hands and puts him in kind of a they're playing of strength, mercy, like it's, in, it's yeah. wrestling. Yeah, there you mercy. Go. There you go. And uh, and he's uh, he's he he makes uh, note that. Because he hasn't crushed him yet, it's because of the, the gloves, and he has the shield of Sidorak around him, uh, which is another Doctor Strange, uh, little Doctor Strange trick for the, you know. So Punisher's making a pretty formidable foe for all these guys, even the Juggernaut and all of them. And uh, he says he's going to crush his hands after a while. He said, "You just might, Jughead, if I if I didn't have a whole lot more than Strange's cape going for me." The eye of Agamotto opens up and just blasts him with what I seems to be sunlight and light him on go. fire and he's done. So the Eye of Agamotto has, has destroyed Jugna- Juggernaut. He's taken out just about all of the, the elite guard that Wolverine has going for him and that has protected him and all the mutants that he has around him. And then as he's going for the actual book where the spell is, in comes, in comes Lord of the Vampires Wolverine in a brand new outfit, cape and all. He's got a skull on his belt, new costume, giant cape flown in the wind, and they are ready 
ready to tussle. Uh-huh. So Wolverine um, tells him he's not about to get to that uh, to that spell, cuts the cape off of him. He says, well, you got to say that, Punisher. He said, the words of one syllable, all you hear see is blam, 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 blam. <laughs> <laughs> and then he runs out of Good bullets. one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's time to go mano y mano. So he throws his gun down. Wolby pops the claws. Punisher pulls out a knife that looks like maybe a short sword, <laughs> like a Bowie knife kind of deal. And Wolverine comes at him and he cuts him. And he says, that blade is made out of silver. And he says, worse than that, before I started this spree, I went and had it blessed by a priest. Another classic vampire. <laughs> yeah. Weapon. Yeah, they threw them all in here. That I don't think the only one I don't think we're going to see is the wooden stake. That's the only one, and that's the one I'm most familiar with too, is the stake to the heart. As far as I know, I don't think we're going to see it. But yeah, everything else is in this freaking comic. Yeah, so they have a good fight. I mean, they're going at it. So he takes him inside, uh, actually uh, inside the room where uh, into into the sanctum sanctorium. I'm sorry that all this happened outside. So he pushes him in. All the spells that are that Doctor Strange has put in place are actually weakening Wolverine. So uh, Punisher actually kind of whip them up on him and they, they finally make it all the way up into the room where the where the spell sit and the Punisher jabs him one last time right in the gut with the silver uh, blessed knife and uh, he runs off and he said uh, uh, he, he, he says you're on the ropes and you know it he says but um, in case you're wondering I'm not enjoying this so I'm doing uh, I'm going to the end and I'm going to end it right now and put you out of your and as soon as he's going to say misery he's going to take that one last final death swing all of a sudden kitty pride pops up through the floor and says stop please don't kill him kitty get out of the and, and punisher can't stop and in one failed swoop cut kitty pride's head off Damn. I mean, heads yeah. are rolling in this issue. I mean, we got yeah. Dracula's heads rolling. Now we got her head bouncing off the floor. And, okay, let me just stop real quick. What the hell is Kitty Pride doing? I mean, just in the middle of a fight, don't really hear nothing of her in this whole issue. And then all of a sudden, she just phases in to beg for the life of freaking Wolverine. <laughs> we might get to that here in a few, because I know that we're, we're going to talk about you know Wolverine here in a few seconds. But just straight mm-hmm. out of nowhere, here comes here comes Kitty Pride. Just out of nowhere. Well, she is a uh, vampire, and she is she was turned by him, so she's trying to save him. So that that's her lord, you know, that's lord of vampires. Okay. And now she has got that lifeless look and no head. Yeah. And yes, indeed. Her head has been separated from her body, which ultimately enrages Wolverine. Punisher takes a second, is distracted because, you know, she's just a kid. She's a vampire, but she's just a kid. And Wolverine takes both fists, rams them into his ribs, and kills the Punisher, which actually falls in kind of a disturbing, almost Christ-like pose on the floor. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So you have Wolverine mourning over the loss of Kitty Pride, and then out of the dead body of the Punisher rises Stephen Strange, the, the the astral form of Stephen Strange, and explains to Wolverine that the reason he's feeling this this regret and this loss over Kitty is because there is still some good in him. You know, even though he's got you know Count Dracula and the one before him, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name or the other one's name, so we'll just leave it at that because I don't want to sound stupid. <laughs> But he, he said, you've got this course of theory remains, but you've also got the same guy, you know, that came from James Hudson and Charles Xavier and the love of Jean Grey and all this stuff. So he has to make a choice, and Wolverine chooses the light, and he feels that the, this evil spell has been broken. He's still a vampire, though, and vampires are running rampant all over New York, possibly the world at this point. Stephen Strange, or Doctor Strange tells him you have to read the spell from the book, and Wolverine, of course, like every other person that's being through this spell or a spell like it cannot read, cannot read Latin. So Doctor Strange walks him through it, and as he's reading it, you see all these these uh, superhero vampires that are writhing in pain on the streets, like like Moon Knight, and you got Spider Man and a few others here. And through the pain, because uh, Wolverine at this point is starting to fall apart himself, he finishes the spell with a loud shout, and you see the Hulk, Nick Fury, uh, Luke Cage, uh, Doc. Oh, that's that's Doc Samson. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Dr. Octopus and the Rhino and Kingpin all turning to ashes, as well as Wolverine. Everyone, all all around the world, all definitely in New York, the vampires are no more. And uh, we have a little uh, 
you know, your people coming out at night, even though, you know, they sent something wrong and says, Daddy, do you think they're gone for good? And so this little kid asks his dad and says, I don't know, but somehow, yes, somehow I think they are. And then we have a shot of Wolverine's dust that still has kind of his face on it, you know, kind of just like a burned corpse. And Doctor Strange is taking his place with his mentor, the ancient one, in the astral plane. And then we have the the Watcher telling us that even though this was a, a crazy adventure that we went through, that evil looked like it was going to be, the world was going to be crushed by evil, I suspect it will triumph. And in the end, prove all that... Uh, prove all that's stronger for what is it? Shoot, I'm, I can read well. Yeah. I suspect it will triumph and in the end prove all the stronger for passing through such trials. And when it does, I shall be watching the oh, end. The end. Well, okay, number one. I've read most of the Punisher stuff. I'm going to say all of it because there's a good bit out there, but I've read most mm -hmm. of the Punisher stuff. But has there ever, you know, has there ever been an unlikely pairing of Punisher and Doctor Strange? I mean, those guys just seem like two separate peas and two separate paws to me. Oh, absolutely. And I don't know if I've ever seen them actually in the 616 team up in any way, as far as I know. I know the Punisher teamed up with Eminem, um, uh, but uh, <laughs> I thought I thought for sure that would be the last damn thing that would happen. And surely Stephen Strange teamed up with him at some point before that, but you never have. You, you never know. But yeah, it, it, it's pretty, again, what ifs take you out there and just, they can throw anything at you. You know, last thing you would ever expect to see is the Punisher freaking wearing the eye of Agamotto and freaking Doctor Strange's cape. Yeah. It's the last thing that's, you think you'd see. And that's another reason why this is one of my favorites because Doctor, I mean, you never, I mean, the Punisher's not going to use magic or any mystic arts or anything like that. He's a gun and knife and grenade guy. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, he, he doesn't, he doesn't take to this, all this other stuff. He doesn't even really like superheroes. He doesn't team up with them. He kills the bad guy. He doesn't beat him up and let him escape from jail again. He kills him. He does away with him. So the fact that he's wearing all this, you know, all of Steve, Doctor Strange's garb and, and using his weapon, you know, Doc, Doctor Strange's weapons and his spells was really cool to me. And that's why I liked it so much when I was younger. Yeah. And, of course, the battle with Wolverine, you don't Epic. get... Yeah, you don't get too many Wolverine Punisher battles. And when you do, you want to get a hold of an issue that has it in there. And I mm -hmm. would say definitely this is a good one. The art again, Tom Morgan. I'm going to see if he's <laughs> oh, got yeah. see if he's got uh, anything else out there. He's got a little bit from what I can see. He, you know, uh, West Coast Avengers, things like that. Oh really? Oh West Coast Avengers. Mm -hmm. You know, I I ended up. Uh, I as a as a collector, I rarely mm -hmm. you know I rarely read any Avengers. Uh, if I was reading something, it was mostly X books to be honest. It was either Wolverine, mm -hmm. Punisher, Marvel wise. Sometimes I get a hold of some Spider Man, but I was really I was really stuck to the X books and Punisher. Um, that was pretty much you know the, when I was yeah. a, a kid collecting. You know that's what I was getting. West Coast <laughs> Avengers, Avengers had no idea. Now I actually stumbled upon almost very close. It's very close to a full run of the the Avengers in an auction. Oh, it was it was it, it, or I should no I'm, I sh I said Avengers West Coast Avengers. Okay, so don't get too excited. <laughs> it was West Coast well, Avengers. I, I have I have something about that as well. Uh, I was gonna say I I got it. Oh man. I think I ended up getting it in a long box uh, at this auction for it was pretty cheap. But going through it, it was it was most of the run of West Coast, which mm -hmm. is there's some good stuff that happens. There. But Tom Morgan is that his uh, is that his is that his he, big he deal? Did Captain America. He did some Captain America from '87 to '88. Uh, Punisher 2099, Iron Man, and Extreme Justice for DC. I don't know anything about Extreme Justice. Punisher 2099 I'm familiar with. Yeah. Uh, West Coast Avengers, Star Brain, Captain America, Power Pack, a little bit of Star Trek, Adventures of Superman. There's some, you know, he drew the comic book version of Barack Obama's biography. We'll have to correct. Oh. I have a good friend, a phenomenal guy. His name is Josh Calandras, and he has actually, he actually went on 
and he went on the hunt to get the full run of, of West Coast Avengers or Avengers West Coast, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. He had, to my knowledge, he might, I think, I'm pretty sure he still does. Uh, I hope he does, and I hope he got them all, the entire run of West Coast Avengers because nice. he enjoyed it. I mean, I always looked at it as the B team because it kind of was. I mean, you, for goodness sakes, you had Dark Hawk on there. But, I mean, but it, they weren't Great Lakes Avengers. So that's good. <laughs> But um, that's like the that's I, like the H team right there. Yeah, I always <laughs> I always pick that in. But I mean, you go back and you go, you've got the you know I think it's uh, Hawkeye. I know Hawkeye Tiger, was Tiger, Tiger was on Tiger, there. Tiger, Iron Man, Wonder Man, and Mockingbird, and and Jim Rhodes was Iron Man. So Brody. you had a pretty good team. Yeah, you had a good team. But uh, I always picked that in. But I went back and read some of this, the the West Coast Avengers, Avengers West Coast, and then they kind of changed titles there for a while. Uh, after for a while and it's a fun read man it is really it's really a fun read and uh i wish i had the dedication to some of my my runs as he did to that so kudos to him for that man yeah very cool i, I see josh post every once in a while i know he's he's i see him on facebook every once in a while talking about stuff um here's my new year's resolution folks i'll go ahead and i have not made one resolution i know it's january 2nd going on january 3rd my new year's resolution is to read and sell what i feel comfortable selling i've become a very big fan of going to auctions and trying to get as many comics a lot of it to me is about quantity over quality you're not going to see me spend uh, (laughs) a lot of money on an issue i'm going i'm going to try and get the issue because i want to read it i don't i give a crap less if it's worth $300 $300 because a lot of times it's not. It's very rare <laughs> nowadays that you find anything that's rare or that, that that's worth a, a good bit of money. But I have a lot. I, I dude, I, I probably in 2005 or 2004, I can remember this pretty clearly because if you ever, if you have ever moved, which we know Teasley's in the process of doing, I'm sure you've moved in the past. If you have long boxes of comics that your ass has got to take upstairs because you're moving <laughs> or put on a damn truck, you know how many long boxes you have. Yeah. So I had probably three to three and a half long boxes in 2005. Started going to auctions in 2010 was the first auction I ever went to. So in in five years' time, might even be a little bit later than that. Might have been even 2011. But four or five years' time, I've I've gone up to 12 long boxes now. And oh that, my God, that is impressive. Uh, I do not want to move because of that. <laughs> if I ever have to move, I'm just going to be like, gosh, I got to move all these. I got to go invest in a freaking like four dollies in a forklift or something. a lot. I think of what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and read what I got and turn around and sell it. And I'm not going to try and, you know, it's one of the things where I'm not going to try and get, you know, maximum price out of it. Um, mm-hmm. the, cool, the cool thing is, is that some of it, just like your, your buddy Josh, Gosh, he was going on trying to get full runs, and I think mm-hmm. a lot of obviously a full run of something is is worth a lot more than you know three or four issues of something. Uh, you get a complete yeah. story, you know. So absolutely, I, I know I have a couple. I wouldn't say full runs of issues, but I mean like for example, Secret War. I don't know if you remember Secret, oh, not Secret yeah. Wars, but Secret War, oh, which, yeah. which came out right prior to oh, yeah. Civil War happened. Um, mm-hmm. That's no, one of the things. That's one of those things that I read. It's sitting upstairs. I'm probably I'm I'm not one of these guys that grabs uh, a storyline and reads it like you know uh, every year. I read it like three years ago and it's still sitting up there. Uh, it's not doing me any mm. good. I think you know. So I think what I'm going to try and do this year is I'm going to try and start digging and pull some stuff out. And, and if I've read it, I'm going to try and do my best to get rid of it. Because honestly, man, I don't know where you're at. And I know you mentioned that you are part of the digital age. You have uh, I'm oh, the name of part of the digital age because there's not many uh, there's not many physical you know brick and mortar uh, places where I can buy comic books around here. There's uh, there is one that I found and I have frequent or not frequent now that I've been to once. I want to start frequenting. They're all you know half hour away from me to an hour away from me. I know half hour not doesn't sound like a lot, but when you know it, it's out after the way. work or you know it's yeah. one of those things. 
where it's like, you know, let's get you know, some gas to get there. And then you, I know with me, I'm going to go there and spend some big bucks because, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll want everything. So it's easier <laughs> for me to just to go into the uh, digital age and pick and choose what I want. I tell you what, listening and, and, and being on the show, listening to the show has definitely made me go back into my, my long boxes and dig out some stuff, um, that I forgot that I had. It's, I appreciate that because it's, it's, it's encouraged me to go back and read some stuff. I mean, oh, I, I've had some, yeah, I had some, uh, some first issues that I forgot I had, and, you know, Ultraverse, I had Prime and Hard Case and a few oh, other things man. like that. I never yeah. got it. I never, I never jumped into any of that. Although here lately, I've I've become a member of a couple oh a couple Facebook uh, groups or whatever. There, there's um, comics of the 1980s, comics of the 1990s. Well, anyway, a guy was talking about some of the Ultraverse stuff that you were that you're mentioning, and mm-hmm. he he wrote out who the writers were. And I think, uh, man, I want to. Can you give me an idea who? Because I know it was a popular writer that went off and was doing the Ultraverse. Um, I mean, any idea it, off the top of your head? I know Prime was created uh, created by Bob Jacob and Jer- uh, I think it's Jared Jones uh-huh. and a few others and um, it was M- Malibu comic books so Al- Ultraverse. There you go. You know, yes. Yeah. Is that Malibu who you're talking comics. about? Yeah, and Ultraverse. Yeah, Malibu comics was had some good uh, had you know crossovers with Mar- Marvel and stuff like that. So I mean Ultraverse, you had all kind con- you know Mantra, you had Hard Case, uh, Ultra Force, which was their like kind of like their Avengers, I think. Prime, they were, and they were, they were actually bought by uh, Marvel. I got you. Me. And uh, but I can't remember who actually was the one that went away, uh, you know, broke off and uh, created it. But uh, I think it was like Malibu was uh, launched '86 uh, by Dave Ulbrich and Tom Mason. They won some, you know, some awards and things like that, I think, but uh, they didn't get off the ground too well because, you know, of course, they, you know, Ultraverse was, I mean, Malibu was bought by Marvel and all that, but um, they had some good books, man. They, you know, I got into the, the Ultraverse a little more than I did most Malibu, but, you know, there was some good stuff in there. Well, you're going back and you're reading it. What are, what are you thinking so far? Going going back and reading it. You enjoying it again? Yeah, yeah. Prime was a little odd for me because it's a, <laughs> it's a little weird because it's a it's kind of a, a, a Captain Marvel Shazam kind of feel because as a young kid who gets these powers, he can turn into this massive mountain of muscle who is almost like Superman, uh, but he can only do it for a short time and then he he reverts back. Well, he you know being the being a comic book, he of course. The, the nerd always gets the powers but can't tell anybody. So he's got a crush on this girl and he keeps using his powers to impress this girl but she's still in junior high, high school and this like 30 year old man is trying to impress her and it's just like, this is kind of gross. Oh, creepy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is weird man. But, uh, you know, Hard Case was always good. I mean, it, it's some good stuff. I mean, and then I went back and found some of my uh, Death of Superman and then when they brought the four different Superman back, which was kind of weird but it's still a fun read. Of course, the Infinity Gauntlet and some of the crossovers in that. Uh, so it's got, I've I've got I've went back and it's it's been a good walk down memory lane, man. That's cool. That's really cool. Any other thoughts on the book? I mean, anything else you wanted to bring up? Anything else you in, in, you enjoyed? It was Dislike, I mean, it anything was, like that. It was fantastic read. I mean, the what ifs are always a good read. Like I said, I was going through my old comic books. And I, I brought out a couple of them. What if uh, the Punisher had killed Daredevil, which is another one where Spider Man goes off the deep end, then and then what if uh, Captain America led us an army of super soldiers into World War II, which was an awesome read, I think. So, I mean, I'd grab it, man. I think you won't, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But as far as this one, it really shows, uh, shows, in my opinion here, they thought Wolverine was, that he's, you know, even though he's feral and berserker and all this stuff, and he's still a good guy at heart. And then yeah. you've got, because he loved Kitty like a little sister, and the Punisher who, you know, like I said, it kind of fell in that, you know, kind of disturbing, almost Christ-like pose, but he did give his life to try to save everybody else. So they, they gave him that savior, you know, kind of outlook on everything. So he, he, he died trying to say to save everybody from this, this outbreak of vampires. And then Dr. Strange is, you know, he's the only one that really didn't change very much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Well, for Ronnie Adams, my name is Jesse Starcher. Thank you all for joining us on the newest episode for 2015. I hope you all have a great new year. Have a good one. Thank you very much for joining us. 
Do not forget to subscribe to our new home by punching in W2M Network on just about any podcast platform to get all of our content into your audio feed. Also, give a like to the Rattelich in Broadcasting Network and W2Mnet.com Facebook page in order to stay on top of everything that we have to offer. If you'd like to follow the Source Material podcast on social media, just follow at Source Matcast on Twitter, and we are on Facebook at Source Material Comics Podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please feel free to share. We look forward to entertaining you again soon.